Okay, this section is on dimensional analysis, which is something that we use to convert from one unit to another. But before we go into doing that, we're going to start out with a review on fractions. So take a look at these fractions, and I want you to multiply them and simplify them. Hopefully you know that as you multiply fractions, you multiply across the top and across the bottom. So the answer to this one would be 1 over 6. Uh, this one we can simplify before we multiply. So we get 11 over 21. This one we can also simplify because we have the the twos there. So we get 1 over 7. Um, here we have a number where we have the, a fraction where we have the, the same number on the top as on the bottom. Same here and same here. Does multiplying by a fraction that equals 1 change the value of a number? The answer to that is no. Because if we take 1 third and multiply it by 1, which this 2 over 2 equals 1, we still get 1 third. If we multiply 2 thirds times 11 over 11, we get 2 thirds. We get our original number. If we take 1 half and multiply by 7 over 7, we get our original number again, which is 1 half. So here's the key idea here. You can always multiply by 1 without changing a number's value. Next we're going to see what happens when we throw some units in there. We're going to start out with the variables. So we have 1x and 2x. Now what can we do with those x's? we can cancel them out. So what we end up with is 1 over 6. And the reason we can cancel them out is because they're like terms. They behave just like numbers. When we have y times 1a over 2y, if we imagine that like y over 1, uh, they're kitty corner from each other so they can also be canceled out. We have one on the top and one on the bottom. That's all you really need to cancel out is one on the top and one on the bottom. So we get 1 a over 2. Now in the case of this last problem we have m times 1a over 2m times 3m over 7a. We can cancel out the bottom m, but which m should we cancel out on top? The answer to that is we can cancel out either of the m's on top. So I'm going to cancel out the first m and what we end up with um, after we cancel out the two a's is 3m because that variable stayed, it wasn't canceled out, over 14, which is um, comes from 2 times 7. So here's rule number 2. Variables or numbers on the top and bottom of multiplied fractions can cancel out. We can treat a unit just like a variable. So if we have centimeters here and centimeters here, they can cancel, which gives us 1 meter over 100. Keep in mind we have to keep those units, we have to bring those units all the way across if if they're not canceled out. Here we can cancel out centimeters and meters so what we're left with is 5 million micrometers over 100 uh, this last problem, we have 3 meters over 1 second, 100 centimeters over 1 meter, and 60 seconds over 1 minute. The units I can cancel are meters and seconds. So what I'm left with is 18,000 centimeters over minutes. There are different ways we can write the same measurement, but using different units that doesn't change its value. So 0.25 hours we could write we could write a quarter of an hour that doesn't change the unit but if we wanted to a quarter of an hour would be equal to 15 minutes. There are many different ways we can write these measurements without changing the value and that's the idea here is 1.5 meters um, is equivalent to 150 centimeters and 12 grams is equivalent to 12,000 milligrams. That brings us to rule number three. There are multiple ways to write a measurement 
without changing its value. And a conversion factor is a fraction that shows the relationship. So it shows this equality. And an example of a conversion factor would be 60 seconds over 1 minute, 1 meter over 1,000 millimeters, 12 inches over 1 foot, and 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram. Now, uh, let's just pull this one aside here. 12 inches over 1 foot equals 1. I could also write that as 1 foot over 12 inches if I wanted to. That also equals 1. These conversion factors can be flipped around if you need to cancel something that's on the other side of it. So let's put this all together. You're going to combine rules 1, 2, and 3. You always start out with the given unit that you have, the measurement and the given units that you have, and you multiply it by a conversion factor. That's just a fraction that equals 1. Then you cross out the units that are on the top and the bottom of the fraction, so you get rid of the units you do not want, and you convert to the units you do want.